Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it's Brick Hall O'Clock with Brick Hall 144. Wow, would you believe it? That is a dozen, dozen Brick Halls. <laughs> wow, <laughs> for anyone who remembers their times tables. Anyway, we've got a real treat ahead in that we've got a package from Bricklink.com, a small package from Lego Bricks and Pieces, and two things sent in by you, my wonderful subscribers. <laughs> Well, the most important of these are clearly the uh, subscriber ones, so I'll go through those first. This one feels like a large letter. I'm thinking it might have some photos in it. Who knows? Let's see. Oh, golly, it is very thick. If it's too thick to read, uh, I might have to pause it. No, we've just got one letter and lots of good pictures, I think. So here we go. Hello, Robin. In a previous parcel, I sent you some photographs of my Micro Shepperton's Funfair. The name comes from my actual surname, just modified to sound a bit more showmany. There's even drop shadow and an occasional colour scheme to the wagons. Uh, yellow for sunny days, blue for the sky and red cap tops are to remember the early days when wagons like these were often just red. Since I had the whole set out again and decided to rebuild it due to seeing the Goose Fair and the Nottingham Christmas Market being built, I've taken close-ups of most of the rides, sideshows and stalls. Included is my dual-purpose stage come cinema wagon, complete with seating. Well, that sounds interesting. Everything will pack down and fit onto each of the empty wagons you can see in the background. If I had the space and display space, I'd be designing more stuff. And that's the really hard thing of those sort of things. Not only have you got to design some sort of ride, but then you have to have it so it can fold up and fit on the back, back of a wagon. I never had to do that with any of mine, thankfully. Um, the love of the old 70s and 80s funfair wagons has driven me to build this, and that is why they exist alongside the fair and not tucked away. I hope you enjoy these pictures, and it gives you inspiration if you should decide to make a minifig scale version of one of the sideshows. Happy building, Barry, aka Audiotron1003. P.S. I'll send these as emails, but I can't find a way to do this. Uh, okay, well, my email for a start is on my channel page, which sometimes you can't see, depending on which uh, device you use to look at my uh, channel. Uh, basically, if you go on a computer, definitely, and you look at the About page, you can find an email address on there to contact me, sending pictures uh, electronically, but these are just as good. And wow, look at that. Uh, so we've got a very mini version of the Dodgems. Like in my one with the vertical drop ride, spinny ride, and all the rest of it. Yes, these are micro scale, so one of these things will probably be about that tall. But it's very bright and colourful. And yeah, the inclusion of the old school trucks on the back is very good. Oh, and using those figures for the uh, both the statues and the staff on the inside of that. And you've made your own stickers. Very clever. Very nice. Oh yeah, and they <laughs> the uh, balloon dogs. Showtime, Shepperton's Funfair. Oh, it's very bright indeed, Barry. Oh, yes, and you've got the, the space uh, 1x6x5 piece from the old classic space as the cinema screen. Ah, oh, I see, right, and that's all the seating on those panel pieces. Very appropriate, yep. And there is the bottom of that vertical drop ride with Sky Scraper, I think that says. Shepperton's Whirly Gigs. The Big Jenny which, I don't know what that, oh, it's a whirly thing, right? Yeah, jolly good. And that's one where it goes up and down, dizzy or something like that. What's that say? Rockaby. Oh, so that's a big uh, twirly one, I think. Yeah, like my um, turbo tumbler. Very good. Oh, and you've got the graffiti pieces in there as well. They're from the uh, Space Police sets. Yeah, very nice. Wow, it's just so vivid. I agree with your colour schemes, totally. So what's that? Just a thing to buy something, or is it a stall? Yeah, it's the only one I can't work out exactly what that one is. It's probably my lack of knowledge. I think it is a stall, yeah, because here we've got another one. Loads of different eyes and prizes and things like that. Night, night. <laughs> and there's the whole thing again. Wow, Barry, that looks absolutely great. I think that's even more than we had last time. And this great big one is one of those slides, I think, where you just go down on a mat. Yeah, very nice indeed. If I had more room for my fairground, I'd be adding, well, that drop coaster for a start, the official one, 
uh, sorry, the loop coaster rather, the new uh, loop coaster, and probably more, more, more rides of my own design. But you know, it's uh, it's hard enough keeping the whole thing running uh, with the mechanics as it is. Well, I say that it's only really the the uh, dodgems that I'm having trouble with at the moment. But um, anyway, thanks very much for that, Barry. I like to see other people's stuff and hear about what they've going uh, got going on in their cities and setups. Uh, then we've got this one from Australia, which unfortunately. You're in my bad book because, look, you put a value of $100 on it. So I had to pay a customs charge. I had to pay £20 to receive this. So if you're sending me a package to the usual address in future, if you write $30 or £30 or whatever as the customs value, then they won't stop it and they won't uh, have to make me pay for something just to receive it. And we've got a minifigure. We have got in here, it looks like a... Uh, Forestman of some sort, or forest lady. Oh golly, it's all very professionally wrapped. Here we go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And we've got a teacup and saucer, and we've got. Oh, I don't recognise that torso. Is that of like the forest maiden or something? Uh, a sort of lady Robin Hood. You have to try and squeeze that on to get it on with the quiver for the arrows as well. We have got a Mrs. Hood, but that doesn't mean we can't have a lady uh, addition to the uh, gang on here as well. Slightly different kit set up with kind of a maple leaf belt, the quiver and the bow, of course, and lovely gauntlets on the wrists. That's great. I really don't recognise those, but I reckon it must be one of the series minifigures, that torso. Either the Forest Maiden or an elf or something, and I just didn't get it because I don't really know where to put all the fantasy ones. And a really nice freckly face. So, yeah, that's great. Thanks very much for that. You haven't, you haven't given a letter, so I don't know your name, whoever sent that, and a cup of tea. <laughs> so we better give her that as well. Right, so that is her. Thank you very much, uh, Australian person, whoever you are. Great addition. Thank you. Right, put that to one side, and then we can get on with, well, what should we do next? Should we do the bricks and pieces order? So this is quite small. Uh, and I got this for two reasons, both of which were quite urgent. Uh, first of all was getting some of the barn and farm animals uh, from set 60346 uh, while they're available because as soon as you see them they just vanish because people buy them and then Lego have to sort of stop selling them and make some more <laughs> before they can sell them again. And um, it's quite interesting actually because the first time I did a bricks and pieces order I put all the animals from that set into my basket uh, and then while I was checking out, they ran out. So they got kind of uh, automatically like taken out of my basket. And when I had finished the order, they were all missing. I thought, what on earth's gone on? It was an absolute nightmare. So uh, basically this is to top up the animals that were missing from that original order, which were a couple of pink pigs, because most of the ones on my farm are that sort of uh, nougat, medium sort of fleshy type color. And Yay, lots of the tiny piglets, most importantly. Oh, and aren't they adorable? So they'll be going on Far Corner Farm, of course, and I got rather too many, probably. But then you do get quite a lot of piglets in each litter, don't you? So I've got six of those, and they are lovely. Yeah, you need the numbers so they can all be sort of, you know, standing on top of each other or standing on top of mum or something like that. <laughs> That's good fun. So, yeah, I like that. Oh, it's a bit too far away. Let me show you that more up close. Yeah, that looks really good fun. So I'm definitely going to have a nice, interesting scene for that bunch of pigs. Maybe they'll evict the other ones out of the pig star. I don't know. Uh, so that's them. Uh, then we've also got, of course, the lambs. They were the other one that was missing from my previous order. And they're very nice indeed. And I thought I'd need quite a number of those to go around the uh, sheep as well. So I got six of those as well. Bit of an extravagance because uh, they're about £1.40 each. But... I mean, they are adorable. So six of those is very good. And then the other piece that they didn't have uh, until this order was made was this, which is the fleece for a normal sheep. So this is the piece that you've all been waiting for. Huh? Huh? Dad joke? No? No? No. Shut up, Robin. <laughs> uh, basically, it's the piece that can go on there to make it a very woolly sheep. And then when the uh, farmer gives it a shear, you can just take off the fleece and sell that to uh, the clothing industry or whatever, whoever uses it nowadays. Uh, and uh, it will be a shorn sheep for the rest of the year. But I think I'll have one that's obviously uh, escaped the shearing process or something like that, because I think that's what happens. You have to try and round them up, give them a shear, and the odd one gets uh, <laughs> through the uh, 
through the uh, cracks basically so that'll be really good so that is the uh, part that you've been waiting for uh, and then the other really urgent thing that I needed from this order was some amendment pieces for my mall build of course so that really made it uh, urgent indeed and it was one of these panes of glass for the 1x6x6 frames and two sets of doors for the same and they're all going to go on the record store uh, on the bottom level of my mall uh, which is just over there so uh, yeah I can't really drag it in shot at the moment but nonetheless they will be so you've got a door on one side in a door on the other side in and the front will be completely sealed if you can remember how it looks so that was just to do one of the amendments that was suggested uh, that I didn't have the pieces for uh, right, so that's all the emergency stuff covered. Uh, so then we've got other nice things to have. This was the sign that's above that uh, barn on the Barn and Farm Animal 60346 set. Uh, and what it could be for almost anything. I mean, it does look quite farmy, obviously, with the uh, green fields and the sun coming over the top. And it almost looks like a sunflower or maybe a, a corn on the cob or something like that. But anyway, I thought it was a nice piece. So yeah, nice big sign. I'll get one of those. Could go in a supermarket, could go anywhere. Talking of tiles, got four of these, they're only 10 pence each, and they're little blue swirls, and I thought they could be ice creams uh, for the top, just a different variety with a sort of a, I don't know what it would be when it was blue, blueberry sort of swirl, I suppose, or I thought a pair of them could be somebody's very zany eyes, uh, like they've been hypnotized or something like that. So I don't know what is going to be able to take two of these round tiles for its eyes to be hypnotized maybe it'd be a wacky fish <laughs> in a deep sea cabinet i don't know so ideas for whose eyes they could be uh, and then so i could probably have two for ice creams and two for uh, a pair of eyes that'd be quite good fun uh, then i got a couple of these uh, which were actually for the mall uh, to help me hold up all of those um, palm leaf pieces uh, in that that bit we did uh, just the other day uh, but essentially I changed how I needed to do that so I don't need those for that anymore but they won't go to waste I mean these pieces are really useful and this bright light orange uh, I don't have any so I thought that'd be good to get anyway uh, then while they were available a hunter's hat so this is one of the parts from the uh, Lion Knight's Castle uh, which I haven't yet built so I've actually got one of these for the uh, uh, forestman or sort of peasant character who would be wearing this but I thought well you never know when I might need another one for the gang uh, so basically I got one more of these uh, to make me future proof or just to give to somebody who's got some uh, interesting uh, fashion sense in my city maybe uh, so that's from uh, the set 10305 Lion Knight's Castle so that's that uh, and then these three that look like they're probably from that set aren't actually. They're from the medieval blacksmith one, uh, 21325, which is uh, a year old now, would you believe? Uh, but it's two sets of armor that I thought I could augment all my knights with. There's this one with a big single shoulder pad uh, that goes over the neck, obviously. But it's got a back stud, so you can do all sorts of interesting things with that. So I've got one of those. And then I've got two of the one where it's kind of a pair of massive metal shoulder pads, essentially. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. And they will just, just, you know, augment somebody else. I could almost give it to one of the gang, actually. But they don't really wear armour, do they, forest men? Uh, one black clamp, which was for something important. I can't even remember. And wow, I think that's absolutely everything now, isn't it? Anyway, right, uh, I'm just going to tidy this up. Probably move the camera so it's a bit closer, because we're a bit far away. And get on to my BrickLink package. Whoop, whoop. Well, as I dig into my package from Bricklink, I remember that I missed uh, the squirrel, <laughs> the grey squirrel that's from that same farmyard set. So I got one of those as well. So I think I've got the full set of the black one, the uh, orange one and this one. So that's really good. Uh, I have to put those somewhere in the trees of my city. Uh, and I did quickly just look up the torso of this uh, lady character here and basically that's from the series 21 centaur actually so i do have that torso uh, but used in a very creative way and i just realized as well we've got the dark green midi legs here so she's short so yeah i'll pretend that isn't mrs hood just uh, so she doesn't get offended by being called short <laughs> but she has got a lovely cup of tea for robin so that's very nice so anyway that's those pieces done i'll keep them slightly separate from these ones because in this cereal box are loads of used pieces that will need a nice wash right so where to start in this well the main reason for this order was actually these big yellow pieces uh, and i was looking out for them uh quite 
Ur well, not urgently, but they aren't very common yet at least because they come from the uh, underwater set for the uh, Ocean Exploration Base 60265, which is the one that I bought uh, three times to make my huge uh, underwater base in the uh, 20,000 bricks under the sea cabinet. Uh, and I just wanted to do an extension of it because I got a really good suggestion from uh, one of the people who watched that video uh, to basically extend it just a little bit uh, on the right hand side. So it kind of looks like it goes off into the distance through the guillotine that is the side glass and maybe even the back glass as well. So I just wanted two more sections. I didn't really want to buy a whole nother uh, set just to do that, but I wanted two more sections. Uh, and well, because it was a relatively recent set, they haven't really made the second hand market yet in great numbers, but these were the first ones that made it. Uh, so I got them. Uh, so there they are. Uh, and also, the same idea was to make the build just slightly higher off the glass, so then we could actually peek into the end of one of these sections from that side glass, much like we have, uh, and we're always going to, on the other side, on the inside of the lab, uh, from the left-hand side of the cabinet, we'll be able to peer into one of these sections on the right-hand side of the cabinet. I mean, you'll really have to crane your neck, but at least you will be able to do it and see maybe a scientist at work or something like that. So anyway, I love that idea. So that will be the theme of a future video. And these are the fundamental parts that I needed to do that. Uh, and I clearly found two of these wibbly pipes, which I've used for um, the Ghostbusters sort of streams and I could use under the sea probably as well. Uh, I haven't got a specific task for those. Here's some other parts I needed for this very same build, being the yellow window frames, this style that go into that sort of a build. Uh, what else is interesting in here? Not much. I've got these, which are old grey kind of pulley wheels. Uh, so therefore an old fashioned sort of classic build that I'm planning, uh, that I'm really looking forward to actually. Uh, so I don't think I'll tell you too much more about that because it might spoil it, but I needed uh, several of these and these are the last two I think. They might be the last pieces. I'll have to check that project. Uh, I've got three of these in orange. I need more than three if I'm going to do this idea and I may never get to it, but I just thought these pieces aren't that easy to find. And if I do uh, use them for a Doctor Inferno build, then I'm going to need eight of them. So I'm going to start getting them when I see them now because uh, I think they'll be the hardest to find part for that potential future build not sure because i've got quite a lot of dr inferno builds already so it's kind of like um the official spider-man sets or something you know you think he's got a spider helicopter a spider van a spider car a spider plane a spider submarine you, you know he's got a spider everything but maybe dr inferno does need a dr inferno uh one of all those vehicles and more uh maybe he doesn't <laughs> Uh, a couple of these bar pieces I've been missing. Always could buy these if they're cheap because I'm going to go through an absolute mound of them in the undersea cabinet. Ah, now here's something I've been looking forward to. So just the other week, I bought the second key for my cabinet, the uh, key ring, uh, being the Manta Warrior. Uh, and uh, that was to go with the uh, Portal Emperor to be the two key rings on the two keys for my 20,000 bricks under the sea cabinet. And then I saw this. Yeah, it's the Barracuda one. Uh, so basically the Barracuda Guardian, and he's new even, not that that really makes a huge difference, but he's he's just more funky than the Manta Warrior. So basically, bad news Manta Warrior, you've been relegated because this guy is going to take your place. Because having him hanging off one of the keys to my cabinet will, well, cheer me up every day when I see that wonderful face. <laughs> he's great. And he's even got a fin on his bottom. Lovely. Yeah, I adore him. So he is going to be on my cabinet in moments after I finish recording this video. Uh, what else we got? We got some bits in here. Always amazes me what people put together and what they don't put together. It might just be what they picked uh, in the order they did it, but there doesn't seem to be a great deal of things you've got, these have got in common. Uh, one pair of handlebars. I wanted the metal one to do a, a vendor's sort of cart. Um, a couple of tiles I needed in dark blue, I think for this setup actually. Uh, then some trans orange that I'm going to potentially have under the sea in my, um, cause I was thinking of doing a mid ocean vent or whatever they're called. Uh, and I might need some sort of lava popping out or something. So that's them. And there's the glass pieces for those windows, of course. So we've already got kind of one, two, three projects pieces here for, yeah. 
We've got a lot of grey one by one by three bricks. I think they're just really cost effective at this store. So I just bought all he had of those. And now these pieces are becoming more and more common. And I think they're going to be quite useful just for getting quite interesting angles because it's not quite 45 degrees. It's kind of, I don't know what you call that, like 30 degrees. Maybe it is 45 actually. Actually, the more I look at it, I think it is 45. But anyway, the point is if I get something under the sea and I want to just change its angle from its you know, horizontal connection point, then that's a really interesting way of doing it. And though I wouldn't do it for one of these, I might have some great big dish, but then it's coming off at a really good angle. So he only had one, um, but as I say, they're coming in all sorts of different colors now, about 10 different ones. Uh, and this red particular one has only been in two sets so far, including the magnificent but expensive <laughs> Turok Makto and Tree of Souls from the Avatar line, that's at 75574. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a very nice set, that, but I, I, I don't know if it's because they're licensed. Those Avatar sets are incredibly expensive. But anyway, a nice piece to have. That I used in my mall, and I stole it from the pink Cadillac, so I need to put that back. Uh, that's uh, Oh, and there's two of those. That's good. I thought there should be. More yellow bricks for that. A couple of brown bricks for something or other. I can't remember what they're for. They're all for specific projects, just things that I needed. A big bag of the old-fashioned arm pieces. Ah, but importantly, these are the bits that I'm going to be connecting them to the rock face with. So we've got a Technic pin on one end, which means I can get any old Technic brick and plug that into a rock wall and have the beginning of the old-fashioned arm pieces coming out. And I don't think I've got any of those to show you because these are all the same, so they won't clip on, but they'll kind of go like that. And you'll start having a multiple bendy arm coming off there uh, going in all sorts of different directions. So, yes, I think I've got enough connection points for those now. More pulley wheels. Completely different use this time. In lime. I think I'm going to use all of these to make clumps of my uh, lime tentacles that I've got an absolute load of already as well. So, two of these will support, well, not these exact Technic pins, but other Technic pins will basically go in through each of those six holes very easily and make six uh, tentacles, kind of uh, what they're called, dinosaur tail type pieces, the middle section and then the end section. So we'll have some really tall clumps, each of them based on two of these. So lime's quite appropriate. I just have to hide the base so it doesn't look too mechanical where they're attached to the ground. And I can attach them to the ground using the Technic cross axle. So I think that's gonna be a really good technique for getting some weeds into my cabinet. And then we've got this. Ah, now I threatened to buy one of these and then I saw it and thought, well, I have to go ahead now, don't I? Oh, I've just noticed a bag that's nearly escaped there. Uh, this is the glass door with the red kind of crisscross on that's for the uh, English style or British style uh, phone box. Uh, and that was part of the um, uh, Ministry of Magic set, 76403, the Harry Potter set, of course. And uh, I made a telephone booth based on uh, one that was sent in. And I do still believe that mine is better than theirs. But uh, their printed door was cheating a little bit, if you ask me. <laughs> so I may include this on my build. I'll see how it looks. Because um, I've got the sort of panelled red uh, windows on the sides. It might look better than the, the plain door I've got. And if not, I'll just use it somewhere else. But I thought it was definitely worth a go. And I can put my handle on there and everything else. So that is a good thing to try. So that can go straight into the city. Sorry, Barracuda dude. Um, yeah, no, I can't make him stand up. Then we've got this piece, which is kind of power crystals, I think, isn't it? It's from all the ugh, recent Buzz Lightyear sets. So that will be really good to use. I don't know where. So ideas for that. It kind of looks spacey, doesn't it? Or sciencey. I suppose it could go in this lab, actually, and somebody could be looking at it under a microscope or something. What I love about this piece is that it's got printing on opposite sides. So it really should be used in a situation where you can look at it from either angle and enjoy that print because it's not often we get that. It's like that pineapple piece up on top of my mall uh, on Monday. Um, it would be great if the printing had been on both sides so you could see it from both directions. But anyway, so that's a nice sort of power source crystal or something for people to be fighting over, maybe space aliens, or uh, just to be in a lab, like I say. So I like that. But yeah, ideas for that, gladly. And then one more bag with interesting sticker pieces in. 
Lots of them. Now, the really important one, which also made me definitely decide that this was the vendor to buy from, was this piece. We've had it a couple of times. It's already in the mall a couple of times, but I wanted a third one, and getting three of these is pretty tricky, uh, believe you me. So this is from the 41347 Heart Lake City Resort set from 2018, uh, and I'm using this as the cocktail menu for my tiki bar. So there's one behind the bar uh, in the top floor that we just did, on Monday. There's one on the uh, direction board that's at the top of the stairs and I want a third for another direction board at the bottom of the stairs. So that's what this is for the all-important cocktails and the obligatory sandwich that no one ever orders. So I don't need any more of those, thank goodness. Right, put that there. Then we've got a couple of different tread plate stickers. And you know me, I always like tread plate stickers, but these ones are slightly different. I'll probably remove them from this uh, bright light orange uh, backdrop, but they're sort of a very densely packed one, so I can use them somewhere else for a bit more variety in my city. Uh, yeah, and I'll move those stickers using my patented hot tea technique. Yep. Uh, so they're nice. They came from the half track on the 60159 Jungle Half Track Mission set from 2017. Uh, which is actually the set that I used uh, for the roof pieces on the double-decker car of my um, bright light orange train, uh, you know, 60197. So, yeah, I've used that set a few times. Maybe I should have bought it. <laughs> uh, we've got one of those arm pieces. Ah, so that's what I was talking about uh, in red. I'll buy them wherever I see them because not many people have got many of them, uh, but you can start to see you can really start angling those in any direction you can imagine. So we'll accumulate those very slowly. I've got, and is the sticker in a good condition? It is. So I'll be moving this sticker as well. You know how, don't need to do that again. Uh, this is a sticker from the wonderful, probably the best power miners vehicle ever, the 8961 Crystal Sweeper from 2009. Uh, I got mine without stickers, so I'm gradually gathering them to make mine 100% complete. That set is very cool indeed. I think you'll agree. Uh, so it deserves a good set of stickers. Uh, and then last but not least, two more snowboards for my snowboard addiction. <laughs> Every decorated snowboard uh, I try and collect and skateboard. And I think I've got virtually all the skateboards now. Definitely keep releasing more though, including in the new uh, 2023 set. So there's some more I need. Uh, but this was a pair that I didn't have whoop, from the same set, which is the... Uh, Friends Snow Resort Ski Lift Set 41324 from 2017. So they're long overdue. Same pattern, uh, but on a lime one and a yellow one. And yeah, they're really nice. Now I'm running out of wall space in my uh, <laughs> in my shop that sells these things, my uh, uh, snow sports shop. So it's almost getting to the point where I'm going to have to either start storing them on the roof uh, or extend that build or maybe even have some sort of uh, dry ski slope or something like that. Not that I've got room for it, but uh, anyway, it's really nice to have those and they're in good condition. Might need straightening on the yellow one a bit here and there. Oh, and on there, actually. They've done one end well and one end badly on each case, but that's no problem. Something I can easily fix. So I'm really happy to get those to help complete my set. Fantastic. Well, all in all, that's a pretty good haul, I reckon. Some really important pieces for projects that I just can't get elsewhere, like this, this, and this, and this. Uh, lots of other pieces to augment things that I've already got. And... Oh, the wonderful, grab them while you can, farm animals. <laughs> so thanks very much again to Barry for his wonderful photographs and for whoever you are, the mystery person from Australia who sent in this uh, lovely uh, centaur-based uh, forest protector. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think all in all, that was a great haul. <laughs> Well, it looks like it might be feeding time here for the piglets, but uh, more worryingly, it also looks like it might be feeding time for the big barracuda over here, who seems to be eyeing up a tasty lamb dinner. Oh dear. Uh, anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. 
And thanks also to everyone who sent in something today, our random Australian and Barry. And if you want to send something into a future Brit call, you can to the usual address. Uh, though uh, in the next three videos, I think we'll be doing something random on Friday, which I haven't even decided yet. No idea. I'm a bit disorganised with the run up to Christmas. Um, next Monday, we'll be definitely doing the mall, of course, finishing off that tiki bar at the top. Uh, but next Wednesday, instead of a haul, I thought I might do a review of all the 2023 sets for the pictures that have been released so far. See what interests me uh, for Brick Nottingham. Uh, and that can also include the early pictures for the new modular jazz club uh, and even the new series minifigures as well. So I think that could be a really interesting video next Wednesday. Uh, but until all of that, see you!